In today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about the proven habits, foods, workouts, exercises, nutrients, and tools that you guys can utilize in order to boost testosterone, sex drive, and anti-aging. I will then dive into examples of morning, daily, and evening routines and systems you can utilize as a high-performing entrepreneur in order to boost your testosterone. Let's dive into today's video. Hack yourself into a tea monster millionaire entrepreneur. The proven habits, foods, exercises, workouts, nutrients, and tools that boost testosterone, drive, and anti-aging. Testosterone basics, let's start from the beginning. Testosterone is basically just an anabolic sex steroid hormone, mainly produced in the testes in men and the ovaries and adrenal glands of women. Testosterone is responsible for men's sexual characteristics. It stimulates the growth of genitalia, increases growth of body and facial hair, impacts the ability to put on muscle mass and lose fat. Obviously, the last few variables there being very key goals of high-performing entrepreneurs. Testosterone is also an anti-aging hormone, which means that a healthy level of testosterone throughout your life can make you live longer. I'm not going to be taking you through the process of your testes actually making testosterone or throwing around some impressive scientific terms throughout this video. I'm going to be taking you through the very actionable lifestyle hacks, routines, and systems you guys can incorporate in order to boost testosterone. Basic lifestyle hacks for high testosterone. First and foremost, sleep enough more is better. Very, very simple principle and something I'm always talking about on this channel in particular when it comes to optimizing sleep. The majority of daily testosterone release in men occurs during sleep. Fragmented sleep and obstructive sleep apnea are associated with reduced testosterone levels. A study released on the Journal of the American Medical Association found out that one week of sleep restriction, which is five hours of sleep per night in this particular test and study, decreased testosterone production by 10 to 15%. Now, the reason as to why this is alarming and worrying for high-performing entrepreneurs is because when clients start working myself and I assess their sleep metrics in our first week of working together, I often see that majority of times their sleep duration is somewhere between four to six hours. Therefore, a slap bang in the middle of this sleep restriction back bracket, as you can see highlighted in this study. As a result of that, obviously testosterone in these individuals can be very low in terms of production, which would be decreased by 10 to 15% primarily. So again, as I said, that is the state of most individuals as high performing entrepreneurs sleep metrics and sleep quality. Therefore, they need to refine this in terms of optimizing their sleep and obviously uh, getting more sleep overall. Studies have also found that sleep's effect on testosterone has an inverted U-shape curve. Testosterone production increased with increased sleep duration up to 10 hours after which it decreased. Get rid of extra belly fat and be lean. It is generally noted in research that the higher your body fat percentage, the lower your testosterone. The correlation works especially in the direction of getting leaner, which will instantly raise your testosterone levels. Being lean gives you high testosterone rather than high testosterone making you lean, which is a contradiction to what most people actually think, but it's very important to understand. You don't need to have paper thin skin and look like a bodybuilder in, in this equation here. It's been roughly estimated that a male body fat percentage of between eight to 14% is optimal for testosterone production. I would say in this photo here on screen, I'm probably about 10% body fat. So right within that range, very healthy and optimal when it comes to boosting testosterone. Higher fat mass also usually increased aromatized enzyme activity, which converts more testosterone into estrogen as well. So therefore, being in worse shape or having a worse body composition is obviously going to be very negative and detrimental when it comes to boosting testosterone. Obviously, in, in correlation with uh, irregularity of blood sugars and also your ability to control uh, cognition, focus and output throughout the day. Being lean is, is very pivotal. Variable number three, practice strength training and gain some muscle mass. While practicing strength training and gaining muscle often reduces body fat percentage, obviously leading to higher testosterone as a consequence of that, it also has independent effects on elevating testosterone. Having higher muscle mass is positively correlated with higher testosterone. Lifting medium to heavy weights explosively can stimulate short-term and long-term testosterone production. Training progressively by adding more weights nearly every time you train causes your body to adapt to higher and higher testosterone levels via neuromuscular adaptations, otherwise known as the term progressive overload, which I'm sure the majority of you guys as entrepreneurs who take care of yourselves are aware of. If not, I'll elaborate on that further and along and down this today's video. Always lift explosively, lift heavy enough, but not too heavy. Use compound lifts to activate large amounts of muscle mass. Focus on body parts that have high density of androgen receptor sites like your chest, shoulders, trapezius, legs, of course. Do sprint intervals to maximize force production in minimal time and to activate fast twitch muscle fibers. Now, when it comes to our goal here, primarily from a training perspective, we are not wanting to look like bodybuilders per se. We're wanting to acquire muscle mass, of course. But when it comes to our goal, um, 
by applying these systems in terms of biohacking systems, optimizing work output and focus, we must keep the goal the goal. And the goal is of course, to optimize workflow, output, productivity, cognition, etc. By training like a bodybuilder and such a degree where we pack on so much muscle mass that won't benefit us when it comes to achieving those goals. Just something to bear in mind. Variable number four, control your stress levels and meditate. Chronic stress leads eventually into chronically elevated stress hormones, which is cortisol levels in the blood. Cortisol is necessary for, li for life, but when exerted too much for too long, it can cause some serious health problems. Prolonged stress has been shown to significantly lower testosterone secretion. This is something which is quite pivotal and quite prominent in the uh, field that I work in, in terms of working with high performing entrepreneurs. The majority of these individuals deal with this as a difficulty on a day-to-day -day basis, week-to-week -week basis, and that's often why they come to start working myself. Their cortisol levels and ability to regulate stress is pretty poor, okay? Implement these potent strategies, which are some of my favorites, into your life to lower stress. Meditation and relax and relaxation exercises such as deep breathing, deep breathing and nasal breathing. Spending mobile free time in nature and walking, something that uh, high performing entrepreneurs certainly do not do enough of. Eating whole, enough whole food carbohydrate, particularly in the evening and when having an intense period of exercise, it's obviously gonna benefit you when it comes to melatonin secretion as well by conserving the majority of your carbohydrates for the evening meal. If you guys break your fast at, let's say like two o'clock in the afternoon, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, if you're fasting for 16 hours, save the majority of your carbohydrates for your evening meal rather than your first meal. Your first meal should be something more moderate in fats and proteins and high fibrous vegetables, okay? Adaptogenic herbs, ashwagandha in particular and vitamin C. Variable number five, eat nutrient dense whole foods and get enough, but not too many calories. So let's start with micronutrients here when it comes to the equation of uh, developing a optimal diet in this, in this response. Getting enough and optimal amount of micronutrients is crucial for testosterone production. Measuring your micronutrient status is a crucial step on finding out what your exact situation is. Now, if you guys want more detail on this particular variable when it comes to assessing your micronutrient status, please either drop a comment below, below this video in YouTube, send me a message on Instagram DMs, Facebook message, obviously like this video, and I'll then create a video on this topic or I'll reply to you personally. The most important micronutrients for testosterone production are zinc, magnesium, calcium, vitamin D, B vitamins, iodine, selenium, vitamin K2, vitamin A, vitamin E, manganese, and boron. Eating a diet rich in nutrients and minerals is crucial, not just for overall health, but for optimal testosterone production. Next comes calories. Your body needs enough calories to produce adequate amounts of testosterone, okay? With constant and prolonged calorie restriction, aka being on a diet or in a slight, uh, obviously caloric restriction as described there, the body begins to adapt in survival mode, which means that, for example, reproductive system is not of great importance anymore. The body's not thinking it should reproduce and therefore produce high levels of testosterone. It's thinking, how do I survive and how do I maintain energy? The body will conserve energy for vital processes and internal organ function. For optimal testosterone production, it is wise to eat at maintenance or a slight calorie surplus. But if you are overweight currently, a minor calorie deficit and, deficit and losing weight will actually elevate testosterone production first. So the plan is to get lean first and then eat higher calories for optimal testosterone production and maintenance, which is what I'm doing right now in this condition right here, this physical condition. Finally, it comes macronutrients, aka macros, which is probably the variable that most of you guys focus on first if you come from the background of eating frequent meals which are based upon chicken and rice and broccoli or veg, okay? Which is the majority of individuals that I work with when they first come into contact with myself and that's why we have to reconstruct their whole understanding of how to optimize the nutrition as a system. You don't actually need as much protein as you have been told. For most, the recommended daily allowance are enough for optimal testosterone production. So for example, I simply eat 0.5 to 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight on easy exercise days and 0.7 to 0.8 grams per pound on hard exercise days, pretty simple. Protein source is also a major factor in testosterone production. A study published in the British Journal of Nutrition found out that when meat was replaced with soybean protein in healthy men, the testosterone estrogen ratio decreased significantly. For optimal testosterone production, it is also crucial that you don't eat too much protein and that you eat enough carbohydrates and fat, very, very important. So for men who exercise and especially those who perform intensive training, it is crucial to eat enough carbohydrates and optimize testosterone production, particularly in that evening meal. The bottom line, for optimal testosterone production, you shouldn't go too low in calories, neither too high, and shouldn't consume too much protein under two grams per kilogram of body weight, 
or eat too little carbohydrates and too little saturated and monostrated fats. For me personally, this optimal ration of or ration rather, or ratio of testosterone production it seems to be on a two and a half thousand calorie per day slight deficit diet with a 90 kilogram body weight, which I'm currently holding, which looks like this. One gram protein per pound of body weight, 1.8 grams per 85 kilos, obviously equates to 153 grams, as you can see on the screen. Okay, 40% of total calorie intake dedicated to fat, which for myself is 111 grams. The rest of daily energy needs from carbohydrates, which is 220 grams. And I save that for my evening meal or my latter meal when I break my fast. I'm currently only eating one meal per day or within an eating window of one per day. Um, so that's roughly spread across four hours. Therefore, that meal is fairly, fairly calorically dense and obviously very carbohydrate heavy as well, being the majority of my carbohydrates consumed there. So yeah, guys, take a screenshot of this equation. If you have any questions in terms of how to break that down yourself, um, it should be answered on the screen. But if not, send me a message, drop a comment below, whatever is best for you. Drink enough water and hydrate yourself. Getting enough clean, mineral-rich water is not only crucial for life, but also for optimal hormonal balance. For example, even mild dehydration can raise cortisol levels and it deleteriously affect testosterone production, which is pretty drastic and pretty bad when it comes to uh, the fact that the individuals in this space as high performing entrepreneurs are already dealing with excessive levels of cortisol in their system and are dealing with chronic stress, well, in the main they are. Especially around sweating a lot and during periods of heavy exercise, the importance of drinking water for testosterone maintenance is increased. The higher the levels of dehydration, the bigger the effects are on raising cortisol and lowering testosterone. On the other hand, drinking too much water will also cause problems such as diluting the blood and messing up sodium balance in the body. If you drink a lot of water, I recommend you add sea salt to prevent water retention and electrolyte disturbances. The easiest way to estimate your hydration status is pretty simple, is to analyze the color of your urine and your feeling of thirst throughout the day. Don't drink plastic bottled water if you don't want to jack up your estrogen levels. Stick to good spring water, filtered water, well water, or glass bottled water, and make sure you're drinking out of glass uh, glasses, pretty much. Have regular sex, but don't ejaculate too often. Now, this is where the topic of no fat comes into play. And it's something that I'm always asked by clients I work with who are doing six, seven, eight figures. And also you go up by you guys on social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube comments, of course. Uh, no fat is something I'm always asked about. So there hasn't been any extremely convincing studies on sex frequency and testosterone correlation in young men to date. One sexual performance anecdote mainly derived from athletes and something that I believe previously speaking when I was playing tennis at a high level is that sex the previous day or even many days before competition somehow hinders performance. But this topic has actually been researched and debunked as a myth. On the other hand, in traditional Chinese medicine, it is common knowledge that ejaculation can more rapidly deplete your qi, your life force. This also makes sense since sperm contains the seeds of life and plenty of minerals too. But this topic has also been researched by scientists. One study found out the short-term abstinence of sex, which is around the three-week bracket, slightly increased testosterone. Another small study could actually verify that an optimal ejaculation frequency for men, testosterone-wise, is actually seven days. The study found that on the seventh day of abstinence, there was a significant increase in testosterone production. 146% with a study of 28 men in this case. But too long a period of abstinence, e.g. over three months, can actually crash your testosterone production. Not ideal. So drawing on all of these studies and anecdotes together, it appears that having sex once a week with a real partner is the best way of elevating your testosterone production. I'll also talk about the concept of no fap and obviously then uh, utilizing porn as well at a latter date in this video, at a later time in this video, sorry. Variable number eight, avoid exposure to endocrine disruptors in plastics, food, and water. Endocrine disruptors are synthetic chemicals or natural substances that can alter the endocrine system. Many endocrine disrupts are, are either directly negative, disruptors rather, are either directly negatively affecting testosterone production or act as an estrogen mimic. These are mainly found in plastics, metal food cans, detergents, flame retardants, toys, pesticides, preservatives, cosmetics, and pharmaceuticals. The number one way to reduce your exposure to these endocrine disruptors is to avoid the use of plastics as well as you can with the following strategies. Switch plastic cups to glass or steel cups and bottles, as you can see here. Store leftover food in glass jars as opposed to plastic Tupperware if you guys are doing meal prep in advance or you're getting a personal chef to come in and prepare your meals. Uh, obviously, with high performing entrepreneurs, that might be the case. Acquire a good tap filter that filters all contaminants and endocrine disruptors, e.g. a reverse osmosis filter and activated charcoal filter, which is what I have under my sink right now. Use only organic and natural ingredient cosmetics. Avoid junk food and consume organic food. Avoid the use of detergents and flame retardants. 
Raise your basic aerobic physical capacity as variable number nine or activity, sorry, as variable number nine. Being physically active, uh, inactive is quite deleterious to your testosterone production. It's been shown in various studies that sedentary men who engage in regular physical activity actively instantly raise their testosterone levels and do it quite significantly. For example, a 12-week period of increased physical activity in a group of obese men shows significant increase in testosterone levels independent of a company weight loss induced by a mild calorie deficit. deficit. This means that a basic low-level physical activity, like walking, is an independent testosterone-boosting factor. On the flip side, too much endurance training has been shown to lower testosterone levels significantly. Now, at the time of my making this video, it is still locked down based uh, here in the UK, in London. Uh, it might be the same across other nations worldwide, and obviously, where, depending on where you guys are watching this, it might be the same for you. I've noticed that a lot of high-performing entrepreneurs are now uh, com completing a lot of cardiovascular work because obviously gyms are shut and they're doing, for example, as you can see on the screen here, 15K runs, 20K runs, whatever it may be. That's a 15K run for myself right there. You do have to be aware of this in terms of the intensity in which you are training right now. You should probably read it back in when it comes to the cardiovascular element of things from perspective of both testosterone outputs and also from perspective of dealing with inflammation. You can assess that in correlation with your HRV. So if you are noticing on the days that you're running, let's say 10, 15, 20 Ks, or you're doing that on a consistent basis week to week, month to month, if you notice that your HRV declines, it is informing you that you're dealing with high degrees of inflammation and therefore you should reel back the amount of activity or the intensity of your activity sessions. Okay, pretty simple. Could be other factors associated with that, but that would be one pre marker you should look out for. Variable number 10, increase your uh, androgen receptor density. Besides optimizing testosterone production for optimal actual hormone signaling, you also need a good amount of androgen receptors in your body. Below are some of the most researched ways to increase androgen receptor density. Tongue twist that one. Intermittent fasting and longer fasts. The easiest way to prime your androgen receptors for optimal testosterone uptake is intermittent fasting. Simply skipping your breakfast and pushing the first meal of the day as far as you can is a method that works very, very well. And it's something that I uh, massively advise for the clients that I work with and all of you guys watching this video if you are a high performing entrepreneur. A small study showed that a fast of 12 to 56 hours improved testosterone response by up to 180% in lean, but not in obese men. Now, there is a warning with this. If you are under chronic stress and majority of entrepreneurs are, or particularly during this time period where there is financial instability uh, in terms of the worldwide economy, and have super high cortisol levels all day long, a prolonged 16 plus hour fast might not be your thing. So I'd say with 80% of my clients, they massively, massively, massively enjoy fasting and find the benefits of that. 20%, maybe not so much. And obviously we then take that protocol out from their routine and system that we put in place. Coffee, especially when fasting. Coffee blunts hunger, which makes fasting easier. The caffeine in coffee can raise testosterone levels before exercise, especially when tired and after exercise. However, having said that, I am now on my fourth week of no caffeine and I'm now beginning to feel the benefits of that. The first three, three weeks are very, very difficult, um, but now I'm experiencing huge benefits from that. Explosive resistance training. There are basic resistance training principles that I'll elaborate on further in this video that you should follow to optimize your androgen receptor density. First, activate large amounts of muscle mass with big compound movements. Second, do every movement as explosively as possible whilst maintaining a proper eccentric concentric tempo, aka the negative of a movement and then the positive of a movement. Okay, negative obviously being, let's say two, three seconds, positive being a one second drive. Third, keep workouts intense and short to avoid excess cortisol release. Fourth, use, use progressive overload with training. Research has shown that men who do resistance training regularly have higher androgen receptor density than untrained men. L-carnitine, a three-week supplementation with two grams of L-carnitine, L-tartrace, per day has been shown to upregulate androgen receptor content after exercise, which promotes better recovery from training. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another study also showed that LCLT reduced the amount of exercise-induced muscle tissue damage, which also meant a greater number of receptors would be available for hormonal interactions, and obviously better mitigates inflammation as well when it comes to response from training. Use creatine every day. I'm sure everyone who's trained with weights has heard of creatine. Everyone watching this video, I'm sure has heard of creatine and has probably had that discussion with someone about whether or not to utilize it daily. Creatine is already naturally occurring in red meat and in almost all vertebrates. It functions in skeletal muscle energy production by increasing the amount of ATP in the cells. The research behind creatine is vast. It's one of the most vastly researched uh, supplements on the market right now. 
There are nearly 100 peer-reviewed human studies showing that it increases strength, muscle mass, and power, and effects positively on body composition and sports performance. Quite a few studies have also shown that supplementing with just 5 grams of creatine per day increases testosterone and DHT significantly. Another study also showed that creatine helped people to diminish potential harmful effects of short-term overtraining while maintaining high testosterone levels compared to those who didn't supplement with creatine. Longer term usage of creatine has not been shown to have any negative or adverse health effects. An overall trend towards high testosterone serum levels has also been observed, which is obviously the goal of today's video. One caveat though, there was one review done in 2011 that concluded that higher doses, aka 3.5 to 5 grams per day, of creatine supplementation should not be used by individuals with pre-existing renal disease or those with a potential risk of renal dysfunction, dysfunction sorry, aka diabetes or hypertension. The basics. So now that we've covered the basics when it comes to routines, systems that you can incorporate into your day-to-day -day life, let's dive into notoriously missing nutrients that drastically affect testosterone levels. Let's dive into the basics in more detail. So no fringe, hard to find Amazonian superfoods, but rather simple supplements you can hunt down just about anywhere. If you guys want links to supplements I'm gonna to refer to in today's video or at any point with any video that I post, please drop me a comment below a video or a DM, or below this video, sorry. Send me a DM on Instagram or of the versions I use of the products I'm gonna to refer to in today's video. Number one, magnesium. A supplementing magnesium can help normalize testosterone levels. A diet comprising of magnesium rich foods such as fish, nuts, beans, and green leafy vegetables renders supplementation unnecessary, at least for the purpose of testosterone normalization. The standard dose is 200 milligrams of elemental magnesium once a day, though I recommend using up to 500 milligrams per day, typically taken in the evening because magnesium can have a sedative effect and obviously is then uh, uh, beneficial to us when it comes to optimizing sleep performance and quality. Avoid taking calcium, iron, magnesium, and zinc since high amounts of these minerals will compete for absorption. Number two, vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency is common, especially in people whose exposure to sunlight without clothes or sun cream is limited. Obviously that being something which most entrepreneurs do not expose themselves to enough when it comes to natural sunlight. They probably wake up first thing in the morning, get straight into business and don't leave their desk until the late evening or afternoon, therefore missing out on a lot of natural sunlight. That's both very negative when it comes to boosting testosterone and also when it comes to regulating your circadian rhythms and just general optimal function. So please make sure you are aware of that. The darker your skin, the longer you need to expose yourself to sunlight to synthesize enough vitamin D. Ideally, take 2,000 uh, 2, to 3,000 IU of vitamin D3 with a meal containing fat, either year round or only during the colder, darker months. Uh, obviously, pretty much in London, that's all the time. <laughs> uh, when you are least likely to synthesize enough vitamin D from sun exposure. Doses higher than 3,000 IU may be warranted in cases of severe deficiency or non-response at lower doses as ascertained by a blood test only ascertained by blood tests, especially when it comes to variables like this, please get your blood tested prior to obviously then saying you need high dosages of something like vitamin D. Keep in mind that vitamin D should ideally be consumed along with vitamin K2 as well. Zinc. Zinc is an important mineral for general health and is often marketed as a testosterone booster. Similar to magnesium, however, zinc supplementation can only help when low testosterone levels are linked to the zinc deficiency. So that depends on individual. If your body has enough zinc, taking more will not benefit you. Zinc requirements vary according to diet and level of activity. Sedentary people who do not sweat much and eat enough meat might not need to supplement zinc at all, which could be some uh, in the case of some of you guys watching today's video, as you obviously spend the majority of your day running your business, and should otherwise limit themselves to 10 to 20 milligrams per day, 15 to 25 milligrams per day if you are based on a vegetarian or vegan diet. DHA, DHEA, sorry. Supplemental DHEA can support normal testosterone levels. This, affects, uh, this effect is especially reliable in a case of age-related low testosterone. It's pretty simple. You just take 20 to 50 milligrams of DHEA once a day with a meal. And then obviously creatine, which I've discussed earlier on in this video. Boron. Like magnesium and zinc, boron is a dietary minimal, uh, mineral. Some studies have also noted an increase in testosterone in men, even in young men, particularly my age group between the age of 20 to 30, including an increase in the testosterone levels of young men taking 10 milligrams of boron per day. It is not recommended to take more than 20 milligrams per day. So those are the basics wrapped up. Magnesium, vitamin D and K, zinc, DHEA, creatine and boron. Now let's dive into the topic of optimizing your workouts when it comes to boosting testosterone function. Although there are entire industries built up around herbal and pharmaceutical pills, capsules, lotions, injections, superfoods, and other methods for increasing testosterone, 
In this section, I'm gonna be highlighting six simple workout strategies for increasing testosterone without actually consuming those questionable supplements. Workout tip number one, sprint. Multiple studies have shown that you can boost your testosterone levels by sprinting. In one study, testosterone levels increased significantly for people who performed a series of short but intense six second sprints and testosterone levels remained high even after those people had fully recovered from the sprint workout. So how you can implement the strategy of sprinting to increase testosterone into your daily routines and systems. Try performing several sprints on the treadmill after you lifted weights at the gym. Obviously, that might not be the case right now with lockdown in place, so just head to the backyard, a park, or do a few sprints, even on the stairwell, for example, on your days off from weight training. The current protocol I'm putting in place for most clients for weight training is a three to four day uh, per week pro training protocol based on resistance work, and we then incorporate cardiovascular work on their days off. Nothing lengthy and nothing endurance-based, simple sprint work. Otherwise, they're dealing with high degrees of inflammation. Most individuals will see their HRV metrics decline quite quickly by performing endurance work, so we simply put in place sprint work so their, their ability to deal with inflammation, obviously boost testosterone, is much better. You can even do sprints on a bicycle or an elliptical trainer. Try to include five to 10 short sprints where you can do a sprint workout and sprint no longer than 15 seconds, get fully recovered after each sprint. And generally that requires three to four times longer than you actually sprinted. And do a sprint workout two, three times a week for optimal results. Workout tip number two, lift heavy stuff. While you can do high reps with low weights or low reps with heavy weights, studies have shown that it definitely takes heavy weights to significantly boost testosterone. Full body heavy exercises like squats, deadlifts, bench presses, and Olympic lifts should ideally be used at 85 to 95% of your one rep max. You need to do two to three full body weightlifting workouts per week to get good testosterone boosting results. Workout tip number three, use long rest periods. Scientists have studied the effects of very short rest periods on testosterone and found that longer rest periods of around 120 seconds between sets are much better for boosting testosterone, building testosterone. Considering what you just learned about heavy lifting and lifting heavy weights, of course, this makes sense. However, it can seem like a waste of time to be sitting on your butt for three minutes between each exercise. So if your goals are to increase testosterone, I recommend that you maximize your time in the gym by doing alternate activities during these long rest periods, such as stretching, particularly when it comes to your lumbar back, your lower spine and your hip flexors, or better yet, exercises that are antagonistic and don't stress the same muscles you just work. So an example of that would be performing the bench press and then going into a set of pull-ups, obviously weighted or body weight. Workout tip number four, do forced reps. To do a forced repetition, you perform a weightlifting exercise for as many reps as you can, and then have a partner assist you with completing several additional reps, anywhere from between one to five extra reps, ideally speaking. Research shows that this type of forced rep set generates more testosterone than simply doing as many reps as you can do by yourself. This is something you might have utilized when you first got into training in the gym as well. While you don't need to perform four straps for every workout and every set that you do, nor every exercise, if you're trying to increase testosterone, it can be especially helpful to do your last set of any exercise as a four strap set, particularly when it comes to compound movements and multi-joint movements. So for example, a bench press, uh, obviously a lower body movement, you can incorporate that whether it be a leg press when it comes to pushing up on the positive and getting support with that movement, not a back squat. Back squat will be very difficult to perform a four straps with. Workout tip number five, use your legs. In another study investigating the hormonal response to weight training, participants were split into an arm-only training group and a leg-plus arm training group. Testosterone increases were significantly higher in the group that added lower body training to their upper body training. While it can be tempting to focus on exercises like bicep curls and benching, you'll notice far better results for lean muscle mass, energy, sex drive, and fat loss when you include multi-joint exercises such as lunges and squats into your program. This is particularly important as a point during lockdown where you have access to limited facilities for training um, when it comes to developing your own training protocol right now. Workout tip number six, avoid chronic cardio as I referred to earlier. Long endurance sports such as cycling seem to lower testosterone in the same way that weightlifting and weight training seem to increase it. For example, one 2003 study found that testosterone levels were significantly lower in cyclists than age matched weightlifters or even an untrained control group. Some researchers have even concluded that this type of low testosterone endurance athletes is an adaptation that gives cyclists or runners a competitive advantage, since the extra muscle mass from testosterone would probably slow you down. Hence why, as a 90 kg individual, currently speaking, I'm not more inclined to do more running work or cardiovascular work, okay? Simply doesn't match very well. 
If you're trying to boost testosterone, avoid long jaunts on the treadmill and accept the fact that if you're going to run marathons or do Ironman triathlon, you may have to settle for slightly lower testosterone levels. And again, not necessarily optimal when it comes to what you guys are trying to achieve as high performing entrepreneurs, when it comes to optimizing workflow, output, productivity, and obviously brain function, cognition, dealing with brain fog, inflammation, etc. More extreme and lesser known hacks for high testosterone. Let's get into the more complex things now. We have now covered the basics for optimizing testosterone that you really need to know and do first before you begin to throw in the fancy stuff. So AKA the lowest hanging fruits. Next, I will introduce you to the methods that have not really been discussed in popular literature, which fall into the category I affectionately refer to as the hacking yourself into a team monster millionaire entrepreneur, which I refer to in the title of this video. These methods are also science-based, but I admit that for some of these hacks, convincing human studies are still yet to be seen. So they're pretty experimental, some of them. Electrical muscle stimulation. Again, I won't necessarily dive into the science behind these practices, just the application of it. In terms of figuring out how to self-administer electroacupuncture, I'd recommend looking into a device called the NES scanner, which will scan your body and show you where to apply the electrical stimulation and for actual electrical muscle stimulation on specific muscles. I'll make another video for that topic matter in the coming weeks and months if you guys require that. Simply drop me a comment below. Red light or low lever laser therapy. As you can see here, this is my G red light panel, which I have in my bedroom behind me with the door closed right now. And I use this on a daily basis. Red light therapy has been used to treat various conditions from pain and muscle aches to wound healing, skin conditions, and even depression. The basis for stimulating testosterone production by shooting red light, particularly on your testicles if you're doing this naked like I tend to do on a daily basis, lies on the mechanism how red wavelengths work inside the cell. The key is that they can stimulate ATP production, thus increasing the energy available for the cells. This means more testosterone production. The Juve, which is my red light panel, which I currently have on screen right now, produces light in the perfect 600 to 800 frequency used in research and does not put you at risk of frying your balls if you are sitting there naked. So you turn it on and stand it against the wall and shine it across your whole body pretty much naked if you can do. As you work, read and meditate for 30 minutes to an hour per day. I often do this whilst reading or meditating first thing in the morning, in the evening, and also at midpoint during the day, or if I'm working here, I simply stand it against my desk here. Cold thermogenesis. So there's no straightforward evidence that cold therapy can raise testosterone levels, but indirect evidence definitely exists and suggests so. Do these things to use cold thermogenesis to improve testosterone and testicle function. Take cold baths and showers, something you should be incorporating daily already. Wear loose boxes to keep optimal temperature for testicles and to avoid compression. Sleep naked or wear just loose pajamas and no underwear. Sleep in a relatively cold room temperature, something really, really important for you guys when it comes to optimizing sleep quality and efficiency as well. And don't sit unless it's absolutely necessary. Hence why I'm working at my standing desk right now and I work in a standing position and then go into a seated position throughout the day, back on, on and off. Pulsed electromagnetic fields. Electromagnetic field emitted from various sources, aka your mobile phone, microwave ovens, Wi-Fi's, etc., have been reported to have a causative effect on biological systems such as inflammation, ra uh, ration, and hypothermia. All of these can disrupt testosterone concentration. Okay, and obviously, being in an urban environment like London, this is very, very important to assess. And likewise, to you guys who are based in cities. As a way to fix this issue, pulse electromagnetic field therapy, aka PEMF therapy, which you guys might have heard of before, has been used successfully to treat various health conditions ranging from bone healing, bone healing and pain relief to balancing the neuroendocrine system, including hormone production and melatonin levels. Obviously really important when it comes to boosting testosterone and also sleep quality there. What does this actually mean for you? Many of us keep our mobile phones in our pockets quite close to testicles and ovaries. It is actually a fact that mobile phones emit microwaves that are harmful to normal tissues when key uh, very close to the skin, when kept very close to the skin, sorry. sorry. A number of studies have also shown relationships between mobile use and reduced sperm count and quality. The negative effects are likely, are highly likely to extend also on reducing testosterone levels in men. So the takeaway is very simple. If you know that you're being exposed to external microwaves and Wi-Fi's and cell phones like you would do very much so in an urban area, the use of a small PEMF device or a PEMF canopy or a more general device for whole body PEMF treatment is likely to revive testosterone levels. In summary, so should your head be spinning just thinking about implementing what I've just learned and obviously I've just uh, spoken to you guys about, let's now take a step back and simplify with an example of what a day in the life of optimizing one's testosterone would actually look like. And again, as high performing entrepreneurs, you guys are very taxed when it comes to your time. Okay, so we're gonna implement very uh, lowest hanging fruit systems in terms of things you can optimize without requiring too much time on your part. Here's three simple examples broken into morning, daily, and evening habits. Morning, 
If you are to have a breakfast, include plenty of good fats such as avocado, eggs, olive oil, coconut milk, and the like. Also consume preferable along with breakfast, the following supplements. If you guys aren't having breakfast and you're fasting, consume these supplements when you break your fast. Creatine, vitamin D and vitamin K blend, zinc, DEHA, boron, cacao powder, and maca root extract throughout the day. Engage in as many EMF mitigation strategies as you can, with the simplest strategy being keeping your phone in airplane mode unless you're actively using it, as my phone is right now. Keep your laptop off uh, off and you're off your lap or using an anti-radiation pad when you do and keeping Wi-Fi signal on devices off when hardwise Ethernet is available. It is also a good idea to audit your workspaces for EMF with an acoustometer or to hire a building biologist if you really are serious about optimizing your environment like I have done here in my current workspace. Also, throughout the day, be cognizant of stress so that your testosterone cortisol ratio stays high. Practice enough relaxation breath work such as deep and nasal breathing and belly breathing. Laugh and smile and get outdoors frequently, something which most entrepreneurs uh, who are running six, seven, eight figure businesses definitely do not do enough of enough of, and will actually massively benefit them and isn't very cost uh, heavy per se. Finally, make it a point to be around people, especially women, as the mere presence of females can increase testosterone. And no, porn definitely does not count and maybe in fact be deleterious to hormonal balance. So that answers your question when it comes to the concept of no fap. Also, this is also from a testosterone perspective with today's video, but the aspect of dopamine relationship to porn isn't going to be particularly great for you guys either. Afternoon workout. Here's what a sample of, uh, here's what a sample testosterone optimizing workout looks like. Following the recommendation previously of longer rest periods, lifting with the legs, etc. This workout requires a gym or access to some weights such as barbells. So maybe not so great for right now, but if you guys can perform uh, home workouts, then obviously base it around these movements as well. It's quite simple. With as heavy a weight as you can lift with good form, do five sets of five reps of bench, deadlift, back squat, shoulder press, and clean. During the 90 seconds to 120 second recovery period between each set, you perform easy mobility exercises or core exercises, such as opposite arm, opposite leg plank extensions, plank, side lunges, jump rope, etc., to keep the heart rate accelerated as well. You should simply do this twice per week. And if you're a partner, pyramid up in weight for each set so you can be, by the final set, you are forced to require assistance with each lift aka the concept of forced reps. In the evening, maximize nitric oxide by consuming foods with dinner such as arugula, spinach, beets, carrots, red onions, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, extra virgin olive oil, dark chocolate, and red wine. At least a couple of uh, times per week, have sex. And finally, take 400 to 500 milligrams of magnesium before bed. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you leave it a thumbs up. Obviously leave any comments for any questions that you have, particularly when it comes to supplement links from the supplements that I utilize and any system I highlighted in today's video. Subscribe to the channel for more content coming soon. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's video and can apply these systems, uh, routines and hacks into your daily life. Immediately speaking as high performing entrepreneurs to boost your testosterone.